Out there in the distance is the Continental Divide. That snowpack is our reservoir for dry summer months. And here's a fun fact. Colorado is the only state where rivers run out and no river crosses from another state. Anyway, it's spring here in Colorado, and as we often see here in late April, even May and sometimes June, snow happens. So it's a good time to work on inside projects. So in this video, we'll be going over what I had to go through to install a new DC and AC panel. That's at my nav desk over here. Uh, this is the AC side. It's the uh, Boosie Systems 8027 with the main power off. Uh, including a reverse polarity indicator and then 15 amp breakers here usually just three come with a set uh, or with the panel I bought two extra for the for my needs so then on the DC side uh, this is a Boosie Systems 8068 and uh, usually comes with 10 breakers and I purchased three more for my needs um, I wish they had a greater variable or variety I should say of um, labels I wound up having to pencil in a uh, little better descriptors for what my circuits were going to um, and then on the DC side you have an amp meter and it's uh, 0 to 50 amps and, uh, and then on the DC side a voltmeter as well and uh, and then uh, these actually uh, meters are, are with respect to whatever source I have so I have a three position battery switch and so right now one is my start battery, two is my house battery, and then I don't have a third, so that goes to zero. On the uh, right-hand side here, far right, I have a surface mount USB uh, socket. I didn't have enough room in here for a conventional 12-volt uh, socket. Uh, because there's not enough depth behind this panel on this side. Uh, so I had to go with this surface mount USB, which uh, is great for uh, powering up my USB or recharging my USB devices. Uh, the initial objective was to just replace the original AC and DC panels, which are now 44 years old. But when I started digging into this project, I found the AC wiring was solid core Romac 14 gauge, three conductor, or as they say, 14.3, and that was connected to push connects on the outlets. None of that meets present-day ABYC standards. And on the DC side, I found numerous dead wires, didn't go anywhere, and I wanted to add new circuits for a shower sump pump, 12-volt outlets, and a simple way to monitor battery status. So as I removed the old panels, I labeled all the wires based on labels on the panel switches. And then I followed the factory circuit diagram from 1978. But I found both of these sources information not entirely accurate. So looks like there was a good bit of alteration over the years without documentation. Also, all the crimp connectors used to connect wires or terminate them were hard plastic, uh, PVC or nylon type of plastic. And then some just came apart with a gentle tug due to corrosion. So that required I replace them with heat shrink connectors. I think these are made of polyolefin plastic uh, with a sealer. And then the uh, actual conductor is a tin coated copper. Following the trace made with the template that came with the panels, I had just enough space to saw out a much larger hole in the wall. So at this point I've uh, flushed out new uh, wiring here. Um, these are uh, Ancor uh, 14 by 3. And uh, the rest of the spaghetti here is the DC side, um, including extensions, as you can see here, um, with uh, these uh, heat shrink molded uh, butt connectors and uh, again now I'm updating um, with these labels so I don't lose track of what's what when I install my DC panel but um, it was a it's a real mess and some of the wires were already frayed in some places so I'm happy I'm replacing this um, but as you can see here there's jumpers which I have to figure out which goes to what and uh, carefully uh, pull this apart and re-update the, the wiring on here. And then the other thing I had to do was, was uh, cutting out the original panel here and I flushed it out smooth with uh, epoxy um, uh, made into a putty with um, teak sawdust and some uh, 406 uh, 
Northwest Systems. The overhead in this nav desk area was rotten. Uh, it was vinyl covered uh, plywood and the plywood had gotten moldy in fact. So I replaced that with uh, this uh, quarter inch HDPE plastic and then installed a new Sea uh, Dog um, 5 inch LED light which has also a night uh, vision uh, saving uh, option on it. All right, still working on this massive rewiring project, but one thing I want to add to these DC circuit panels, a 12 volt line for recharging and to running actually, uh, things like this uh, vacuum cleaner has a standard 12 volt style plug and USB devices. And I'm going to use this platform here to hold devices that need charging. So I think <clears throat> I'll install this Blue Sea Systems panel here. Also gives me a 12 volt readout, or rather a readout to tell if I have 12 volts still or whatever. Um, and uh, that's far enough away from the nav station. It's nice to have another place to monitor. Anyway, I'm thinking I'm putting it up here. Be enough out of the way. I already have an AC receptacle there. I don't want to put it on this side where people walking by. And I don't want to put it in the galley. There's enough going on over there anyway. So I think this is probably the best place to put it. Okay, template's up. And I've traced out where the panel will be. And then on the other side here, I had to do some test holes through the template I have. So that I can verify I'm not going to run into stuff. Alright, got plus and minus wires hooked up to this panel. And on the inside I have secured the DC wire. Alright, power on. There we go, 12.92. And on this side, I have a plug-in for my 12-volt uh, car-style 12-volt plug-in. And I have a vacuum cleaner here. It's now ready to use. These 12-volt vacuum cleaners are better than nothing, but not a lot of suction. Even on my Kirby, uh, same thing. And then on this side, I have a standard USB style port there. All right, well that's done. And then I spent many hours snaking wires and establishing fishing lines in hard to reach places for feeding new lines. And you know, a lot of times passed since this boat was wired in 1979. GFI outlets are now available, uh, but for boats, um, <clears throat> they're not recommended in the engine room or in a wet area like my head with the sit down shower. In the cabin, V berth, and then here under the nav desk, I replaced all the lamps uh, which were incandescent in those lights with uh, LED lights, and that'll save on some battery power. And in addition to cabin lights, I installed a tricolor LED light for the top of the mast, the mast head. Another leg of the 12 volt line runs over here to this uh, power outlet uh, next to the AC uh, and that's a 12 volt socket and next to the AC outlet and that terminates on this barrier strip here and um, and then uh, continues on. So going from that uh, F set T outlet there's a wire that goes behind the set T up to the head where the terminus for that 12 volt line on the port side is. There's a barrier strip uh, and a switch to turn off individual devices uh, and I have three here but just one's in use and that's my compost fan for my compost toilet. 
I did rewire things uh, regarding bilge pumps uh, on the, the salon floor here. Uh, the main pump is the white one and the secondary is the red one. I added that secondary one. This boat didn't have that. Um, controls are under the nav desk seat. The main pump is uh, directly wired to batteries and protected by this 15 amp fuse. The only way to turn off that uh, power to that pump is by removing the fuse. Uh, that's also a safety so that in case somebody um, so somebody doesn't mistakenly turn off that pump. And uh, if the foot switch at the bottom there doesn't work, then I have this manual uh, switch to turn on the pump. Uh, the secondary pump is controlled by this panel, mini panel from Rule, and uh, has an automatic or a manual switch, and that power is controlled by the uh, switch panel. Uh, there is a breaker uh, for that. The secondary pump, as I mentioned, is something I added. Uh, it's about six or eight inches off the floor, and that kicks in in case there's a substantial flood that the first pump's not keeping up with. All right, AC and DC panels are wired and ready for mounting on the wall. But before I do that, I thought I'd show you what we have behind the wall in this small triangular space. So uh, first of all, on the AC side, this is uh, shore power coming in, and that goes to the AC panel uh, main breaker there. And uh, then uh, the black wire coming in is the negative side uh, tied to batteries on the engine uh, block, and that um, goes to that post up here. And then finally, the red wire coming in is coming from the common post on the battery switch under the nav desk and that goes to the high side there on the bat uh, battery uh, on the post to the uh, shunt. So um, this is a galvanic isolator back here. Uh, this uh, green wire coming in from shore ground goes to one side of that isolator and then the other green wire coming off the other side of the isolator goes to the AC panel to isolate grounds. The Block uh, you see here, this fuse block, there are four 1 amp fuses, which was required by Blue Seas to protect the meters on the DC panel, the 8068. Um, the back two here, uh, the, uh, this goes to the start battery and this goes to the house battery. And then the uh, leads go on from there to the voltmeter on the panel. Uh, on this side, uh, the first two are the upstream and downstream uh, voltage measurement from the shunt. So as I mentioned, there's a DC amp meter on the 8068 panel. The, uh, the way that amp meter works is actually measuring voltage. And so we're measuring voltage between the upstream and downstream post on this shunt. And there's this uh, thin strip of metal of known resistance and using ohms law you back out current and calibrate the meter that way. So anyway, that's what those uh, those fuses are for protection of that amp meter. And then finally, the red wire here goes on to the DC panel. Oh, and one thing to add is uh, before I wrap this up, um, I'm going to cover that shunt with this uh, little box I made uh, to protect those exposed uh, posts up there. Well, that completes this upgrade of panels and electrical system on this boat. In this case, we upgraded to a Blue Sea Systems AC and DC panel. I hope this video is of help uh, with your DIY projects or inspiration thereof. And uh, I have a few more indoor and outdoor projects to do before we launch this boat, which I hope will be in uh, late uh, spring or early summer, and we'll take you along for that ride. In the meantime, good luck on your work, and I'll see you next time.